The Magic of Necromancer is unplayable and the Dragonite gets the best buff of its entire existence. Let's talk about it. Welcome back guys, we have a lot to unpack in today's video, I'm going to keep it nice and short and sweet and hit on the high points of the PTS, yes the magic and necromancer is completely irrelevant now, you might as well make it a crafter, and we will be going over all of the buffs, debuffs, class reworks, and also some spell reworks, in addition to some of the sets and some of the analysis of the sets, there's a lot of talk that there is a Mars bomb counter in the game, um, I completely disagree, this might be a hot take, but quite frankly guys, None of the sets seem overwhelming this patch. There is one sleeper set that I will mention at the end of the video that I think everyone and their mothers will be running on their Dragonite. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. We are going to be on the PCS all week testing out all these new sets, new builds, theory crafting. It's going to be a good time. If you want to be notified of that, please hit the bell notification icon. Otherwise, YouTube ain't going to tell you jack shit. So the very first change I want to bring to line is the buff to Magicka Sorcerer. Now the Magicka Sorcerer has had their hardened ward buff from 60% to 72%. In addition to having the maximum cap increase, it no longer dynamically scales from Magicka and health. Now the only thing you have to do is stack all of your points into maximum Magicka. By stacking all your points into Magicka, now you always have a dampen ward which is really really beefy as well. How it is currently in this patch, you have to find this nice health slash maximum magic balance in order to have a really juicy hardened ward, which actually dampens, you know, ironically, dampen magic or harness magic as ward strength because all those points that could have been put into magicka is actually going into health to make your hardened ward bigger. So going into the next patch, you're going to have a nice girthy hardened and dampened ward. The reason I bring that up is because of Sea Serpent's Coil. So one of the components to Sea Serpent's Coil is that while you're at full health, you get 40% damage mitigation. I think you guys can see where I'm going with this. If you can keep two wards up at all times on your sorcerer, theoretically you will have 40% damage mitigation literally at all times. So what this is going to lead into is sorcerers being able to push damage and sustain and not have to worry about mitigation. So this is a very subtle buff to the magic of sorcerer but i think it can have really huge effects on down the road all right so this next buff is really going to make you bombers very very sad on your macro so zoss has taken it upon themselves to get in touch with their roots they wanted to change harmony to better suit the lore of the name of quote unquote harmony yes i should you not it's in the the spoiler notes that they want this to be more of a immersive like type of trait to, to work with you know it's supposed to be made to work with teammates and coordination yada yada anyway they completely change it to where when you activate a synergy it's just gonna give you max stats um it's not actually going to impose a huge burst of damage eh, whatsoever not only did they nerf harmony okay complete by completely changing the trait they nerfed the synergy from boneyard by 40 seven percent right so you are no longer going to be able to activate your synergy to burst anyone during your combo with the magic necromancer which leads to the question in pvp what good is the magic and necromancer now um, this class was already struggling you'd have to run a hybridized more or less a stamina necromancer to really pull it off and god forbid you try to run a ranged necromancer because this class has the most inconsistent burst in the entire game just because of the nature of blast bones and now guys it's even worse because not only have you lost one burst component you've lost two burst components so Playing a ranged magic and necromancer, guys, good luck. If you come up with a build, please let me know. Which leads into another point we're going to be talking about later on in the video about the re-emergent of dot builds. So Warden did get hit pretty hard. Uh, they did nerf Chrysalite Shield. They believed that it was offering way too much burst potential for ranged opponents. Instead, they doubled down on the ultimate regeneration, which personally, I prefer the ultimate regeneration as well, because now you can constantly have your healing springs like literally up 100% of the time with minor heroism potions or blood spawn or any other source of ultimate regen. You're pretty much always going to have it. And your Northern Storm only takes like 15 seconds to 20 seconds to get to. So depending on how you look at the Chrysalis Shield Morph, it could either be a buff or a nerf. And last but certainly not least, it is the beloved Chad Dragonite. I don't know who is working at Zoss who has love for the Dragonite, but you know what? You're doing a good job. Well, rats off to you, man. You know, pats on back for this change. So they changed Fiery Grip. They changed the names of it to Chains of Devastation. So this morph now grants you Major Berserk. 
for 10 seconds after casting rather than empower. Guys, you no longer have to be a slug on your Magicka Dragonite running Sea Serpent's Quill to get Major Berserk. Now you have a Gap Closer, okay, that does undodgeable damage, first of all. It actually can potentially pull people off still sometimes, it does bug out. It's going to give you Major Evasion, for, I mean, excuse me, it's going to give you Major Expedition for 4 seconds, and it's also going to give you Major Berserk for 10 seconds. And it's going to give you one stack of your Seething Fury prod for your Molten Whip. This is going to be by far one of the most fun metas for Dragonite ever. The Chain Gang meta is upon us. If you thought Dragonites were annoying now, well, they're about to get much, much worse. Okay, so we're going to jump over into the sets. Now, I am not going to include every single set in this video because quite frankly, like 9 out of 10 of them, are very very lackluster and I don't think they offer any PvP meta shifting capabilities because most of these sets just do buffs and debuffs and stuns none of them really do any damage so I'm gonna go over the ones I think are most irrelevant and I'm also gonna give you guys a sneak peek of my upcoming dot DK build on the PTS and it's uh it's scary all right, so the first set I want to talk about is Rune Carvers. Now, Rune Carver is a light armor set. It's going to give you lines of spell and weapon damage, spell and weapon damage, offensive penetration, fantastic two, three, and four pieces. Now, the five piece, your damage over time effects deal an additional 2,400 flame damage. Now, once this is fully buffed, this will go up to around 3k extra damage. So, yes, at 2800. Plus, you can get this buffed even more with a proper build. This is just some stuff that I tossed together in the PTS. Nothing is optimal yet, but it will be. So, it reads uh, Your damage over time effects deal an additional flame damage on the third damage check. This damage scales off your weapon and spell damage and always apply the burning status effect. Now, reading this first, this seems uh, pretty kind of broken because every three ticks of this, you will get a uh, 1500 flame tick. Okay on each and every single one of your dots that take three times, right? And then it applies burning status effect every single time, feeding into, if you're a Dragonite, feeding into your combustion passive proccy magicka. Well, upon testing this, this set actually does not, I repeat, does not proc more than once. So you'll hit once, so we hit twice, so we hit three times, it will proc the burning status effect, but it will never proc again. So you have to actually reapply the dot or the debuff in order to get it to proc again. So if you are going to use this set, I do see some dueling sets which is going to be completely cancerous on. If you are going to use this set, it is a really, really good idea for you to have the one sec ticking dots. For example, if you go over to Caltrops, read the tooltip, so this ticks every one second, okay? We're going to go over to Talons, this ticks every one second. We're going to go over to Eruption, this ticks every one second, okay? Rapid Strikes isn't necessarily counts the dot. We're going to get into Rapid Strikes in just a moment. So, Vet Strand Inferno Staff on your back bar. This ticks every one second. So, you want these really fast ticking short effects if you want to get the most bang for your buck out of this. But this isn't what's going to make DK's broken, okay? There's another set that I'm going to be talking about later, which is already in the game, mind you. But it's going to be very relevant in this patch because I believe we are getting away from the crit meta and we're going to be pushing into the flat damage and dot meta so the next set i want to talk about is right master's bond this is a light armor set so it's going to give you recovery healing done magica and healing an ally within 12 meters with a direct heal creates a 15 meter tether between you and them for 10 seconds this is very very big guys big boy tether okay this effect can occur every 15 seconds so while you're around that tether you and your allies touching each other are healed for almost 3,000. This will go up to around 3,000 and everything's fully buffed and set and done. It's getting off the higher your max magicka. And during this time, while you're killing everyone, you're also giving them minor heroism. So if you haven't noticed the trend already with the Necromancer changes and the Harmony changes, they are catering to the Zerg. So they tossed one of the best, or probably if not the best, one of Zerg sets you could possibly put in the game. Now this is going to heal fucking everyone. Everyone's gonna have ultimates all the time to just blow you up with. So not only that, there is a set that we're gonna be discussing here very, very shortly that completely ruins solo play. And moving on into said set is Snake in the Stars. So this is a light armor set as well. This is gonna give you recovery, max and magica, weapon and spell damage. Now the five Ps, applying a major or a minor debuff to an enemy applies star venom to them for six seconds. This effect cannot occur for more than 12 seconds, meaning as a 50% uptime. Whenever 
the enemy star venom is healed they take 3600 daedric damage this can scale up by the way uh, up to once per second an enemy can only be affected by one instance of star venom why is this going to destroy solo players first of all guys a lot of people are under the assumption that this is a mars bomb counter uh, this is definitely not because when Mar Mars Bomb procs, it is actually going to purge this effect, okay? So this is not a Mars Bomb counter. What this is, this is a solo play small group counter. If you put this on a group of, you know, Zergers or whatever, this is essentially negating one healing over time effect from them. Who cares? They have like 12 on them at any given time. If you have a Zerg running this and then this gets applied to a solo player or a duo, this is negating one of their healing over time's effects. Let's take the Dragonite for example, your heals. You have Vigor, you have Coag, and you have your Ash Thorn. That's, that's it, you have three. Essentially what this equates to, this is negating your Vigor heal at all times. Essentially negating 33% of your effective healing. So this is going to be very very detrimental to solo players this is why mars bomb is going to be if it wasn't already a meta set it is going to be one of the best sets for solo play in the entire game still yet going into next patch because if you don't have a cleanse for this you're just not going to be able to heal now i'm going to briefly mention the other sets that i don't want to delve deep into because these don't really offer any damage or any other meta morphing potential so we have apocryphal inspiration this is essentially a uh, sustained set this is like a tripod really nothing here good judgment of akintosh while this is actually kind of a cool effect so it'll give you armor it's when you health health uh, weapon and spell damage so the five pieces will make you whenever you blink or charge or leap or teleport due to a pool ability whoever you're focusing is going to have a debuff on them after three seconds the debuff explodes but the thing is guys the only thing it does is a stun and it slows them like who cares you're using break free roll dodge so uh, this is a very underwhelming five piece so there's one monster set that's going to kind of tank you up a little bit if you have a lot of healing over time. It is Ozazen the Inferno. So overhealing yourself, you'll get about 4200 armor. And then uh, when you overheal yourself, you'll also get uh, minor vitality, which is pretty nice. But again, nothing meta breaking here. Roska the Warp. This is another monster set. This is a recovery set. Um, any recovery sets isn't game breaking at all. So I'm not going to mention this further. So we do have one potential doing set. This is going to be a Nyx Hound's Howl. Okay, I believe this is a medium armor set. Give you weapon spell damage, weapon spell damage, weapon spell damage. Uh, this might be craftable actually. Um, I actually have no clue where you get this from, so uh, let me know down in the comments. So, completing a fully charged heavy attack is going to apply uh, major cowardice to your target for one second per 1000 uh, damage you have, weapon or spell damage. We'll see how on average that's going to be about six seconds. So, it's going to lower their spell and weapon damage by 430 while giving you major courage, increasing your weapon damage by 430. Effectively, with all the multiplicative factors, this is about a thousand weapon and spell damage swing in your favor. It has about a 50% uptime as long as you assume. People have around 6,000 weapon and spell damage before we're casting this. Again, this is probably just going to be a, a dueling set, uh, nothing more than that. Oh man, I wanted Shell Splitter to be so good. The first time I read this, I was just like blown through the roof, but uh, I actually misread it. So it gives you a lot of penetration. The five piece, when an enemy blocks one of your attacks, I thought it said when you block someone's attack, okay? You increase the offensive penetration by 630. One for uh, five seconds, you can stack this up to 20 times. I thought, again, you could block abilities and get this penetration, but no, it requires your opponent to block, and if they know you're using this, the best way to counter this is just don't block for five seconds, those stacks fall off, and it's completely useless. So we have Televani Enforcer, this one gives you stamina, health, magicka, while you're blocking it increases magic recovery, and while you're not blocking it increases stamina recovery. Uh, this is absolute dog shit, uh, just, just straight up, like it, literally anything is better than this, you can craft wretched vitality and it's better than this. Now, I'm sure there are other sets I haven't covered in this, but I've read through each and every single set, and they are very, very underwhelming. But, if you have made it to the end of this video, I'm going to let you guys on a little sneak peek of a build I'm working on on the .dk. You can kind of see some of the skills I've been working on here. So, there was one very important change to Vampirism. Vampirism is even more busted than it already was, okay? So, they did change Mistform to where you can't float around in a plume of your own filth anymore. You actually have to be a... a you actually have to play the game now instead of going into battlegrounds activating misform and sitting on a flag and holding it the entire time you know who you are so blood mist actually has a couple different morphs you can get so the way this ability works now is that it is a short range teleport 
with a one second interval to where you're immune. So I do have Blood Mist on. So what Blood Mist does, it does its AoE that ticks every two seconds and it does heal you for a portion of the damage done. There is another morph that gives you major expedition after that. Now, if you're on your Dragonite, uh, you're going to be running the Chain Gang with your Fiery Grip or Fiery Devastation or whatever, you're going to have major expedition anyway. But this is actually very, very powerful. And this heal is actually going to rival that of Ash Cloud when you have multiple people on you, right? So not only when you cast this, uh, during this one second of disapparation period, um, because you cast this and you're technically hidden, um, you do get the vampire passive um, strikes from the shadow, which is going to increase your uh, we uh, weapon and spell damage on stuff by uh, 300 during this effect. So this is a actually kind of a potent heal over time if you have a lot of people gangbanging on you. And this is going to lead into one of our sets that we is going to be potentially broken next patch. Now, I don't know how this is going to work in open world, but I know it absolutely wrecks and duels. Okay, so the sleeper set I'm talking about, guys, is actually Azure Bright. Now, Azure Bright is very, very slept on as is. I haven't made a video about this yet. I've been contemplating on whether I want to make a video about it yet, but uh, this is still in the works. So let's take a look at the tooltip. If you guys are unfamiliar with what this set does, it gives you critical chance. It's going to give you stamina and stamina recovery. When you deal damage with, with a damage over time effect, you apply a stack of Blight Seed to your target for 5 seconds. At 20 stacks, the Blight Seed explodes, dealing almost 14,000 disease damage to the target and nearby enemy around them. Okay? So, the trick is finding a bunch of AoE damage over time abilities that tick every 1 second to get this to proc as quick as possible. And let me show you how quick you can actually make this proc. So this is going to kind of be one of the best case scenarios things, but this isn't out of the realm of possibility. So let's take a look at a little, uh, little Ogrim over here. Let's see how fast we can get this to proc, shall we? So let's go and get all of our dots lined up. So let's take about five seconds to get everything lined up. But now that we have everything active, the stacks keep a coming, guys. There's another 14k. Reapply, right? Boom, boom. There's another 14k proc. Reapply the dots. Here it comes another 14k proc. And then all this is without corrosive as well. So within the past 20 seconds, this has proc'd four. Proc you can probably get five procs out of this. This is absurd amount of pressure on anyone. Now, if you have multiple people jumping on you and you have multiple AoEs on the ground and you get two or three of these going off at the same time, you guys can see what I'm getting at. A good thing to note is that if you need to pressure someone, you can run rapid strikes, and this actually counts as four instances of the Azure Blight stacks. So realistically, if you only had one dot on someone, let's say it's Vetran, and you have Talons and you're spamming your, your spammable, you can get this to proc every three to four seconds, bare minimum. You don't have to have any other additional dots into this. If you wanted to get this to proc really, really quick, let's say if you pop Corrosive, for example, you can pop your Talons down. Let's wait for this to fall off and kick on here. So boom, there it goes. Now let's count. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. It takes three seconds for you to get 20 stacks on someone, hitting them with a 14k burst. That is freaking incredible. A very slipped on set. I think a huge Malakanth meta is going to come since crit damage, since Rallying Cry hasn't gotten nerfed yet. Um, I do think it is going to be advantageous for you guys to stack into base damage and use proc sets just like a Zerbrite to bust up Zerg. Now imagine pairing this with something like Play Break, which applies another dot, and then when someone dies with Play Break, they're going to explode, and then a Zerbrite's going to explode. You guys kind of see where I'm going with this, right? With a Cult Overload. And this isn't just effective on the Dragonite. This is effective on a lot of other classes later. That's why I said at the beginning of the video, maybe the identity of the Magic and Necromancer needs to be more of a dot heavy build because they actually do have a passive, I think it's called uh, Dead and Decay or Rotten Decay, which increases your dot damage by an additional 15%. And if you can tack on something with a Zerb Light to give you a consistent burst every 4 to 5 seconds of 14k damage, that's incredible. So even though Boneyard is nerfed, even though Harmony is nerfed, there's still going to be ways to burst large groups of people so don't worry you solo players or small group players out there i got your back i will be theorizing all over on the pts on how we can best accomplish this together 
you guys will be notified for that again please sub to the channel and hit the notification icon but uh that's all i really want to talk about today let me know down in the comments uh if i missed anything important and also guys i'm doing a pvp top five series we will be on episode number six if you have any clips please submit them in the link down in the description below there's a battle form submission page it will take you approximately like a minute and a half to properly fill out Follow me on Twitch and Twitter because I'm trying to get partnered with Twitch just so I can apply for the ESO stream team. That would be fan-fucking-tastic. And uh, that's all I have for you guys. Have a great night. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.